What's up guys and gals? I'm your host Mike Pugh of the FPC Virtual Channel and you're tuning in to a jazzy jazzy funky fresh blender experience. Um, we're, this is part of the blender series and what you're seeing here is some of the fun stuff that I've been doing. I created this character. This character I call him Zinky. Uh, Zinc as an S was well, Z I N C with a Y. So Zinky. And he has a partner, which I turned off the partner. He's right here. Uh, let me see if I can get his body in there. Having some fun with it. And I'm attempting to do some animation tricks and um, trying to pull off some really cool stuff. Funky, funky, fresh stuff. So, you know. If y'all folks want to tune in and feel free to check it out. I decided let me just throw up a, a live stream while I'm doing my differing daily routines, which is self-training and animation for Blender. Cause my goal, my end goal with using Blender is to become an animator and eventually to create some short films, um, skits and stuff like that. And this right here, this is Zinky and with him in a different pose. Uh, let's see, hit the space bar, and you'll see he's trying to make moves right there. So I'm coming up, trying to come up with some different ideas and concepts of his motion. And that's why I got both character positions in there. Um, this guy, I forgot what I called him. I, oh, his name is Race or Racy. So actually, I think this guy is Zinky and this guy is Racy. I have no idea. It's all good. I like to play around with the names and come up with different names. So these two guys are part of uh, an elite squad of um, unique individuals who are going to be playing different roles in my rap, which I do, um, you know, short rap skits and stuff like that. I'm, I'm going to be throwing it into my rap dummies, which I'll show you all folks uh, real quick where it's going to land at. So let's go over to YouTube real quick and open up a new tab so you can see my Rap Dummies channel, which is a new channel that I started where all of my 3D results of different products that I can produce. I'm going to type in Rap Dummies. So my rap skits and uh, animations and stuff like that are going to land here. So let's see, it's right here. So far, I only have two videos in there. And this is the first one I threw up. Uh, pretty decent, not too bad. And then this one is just talking about the potential of what rap dummies can become uh, in the future, using animations for sure. But in terms of potential collaborations with other rappers out there, whether you're a great rapper or not, it will be really interesting to see what it's going to turn out um, in terms of having more potential for it to grow. And for now, it only has one subscriber, which is really cool because y'all folks will get to see it grow from starting out. I just recently launched it two weeks ago. So obviously that's why it really doesn't have anything going on. But that's neither here nor there. We're working with Blender, but I wanted y'all folks to see the starting of something new that's going to actually eventually develop over time. Um, as opposed to just seeing what's going on on my main channel, which is FPC Virtual. So there you go with that. So these characters eventually are going to land into those location or into that location as rap um, dummies. So that's what they are starting out. Really cool characters. And eventually I may think of maybe making a cartoon out of them. I'm not sure. But for now, I'm not that great at animation. So I'm just trying to still build up my knowledge base and to gear in to do more with it using Blender. So Blender is my go-to tool since it's free and I have a very low budget. So with free tools, it gives me the ability to do much more than what I could do with without it pretty much because paid tools, I don't really have that money at the moment to afford those. But eventually I'm going to do more with that. And talking about that, if I had like an iPhone X, I would be able to an animate the mouth really well um, using some really dope animation um, motion capture animation tools and different things that you can do with it for now though I figured out a way to animate the mouth 
using Papagayo, which is uh, in Blender, it's the older version of Blender, Blender 2.79B, which Papagayo works with. And I can show you all real quick. Let me bounce out of this, show you what, what the Papagayo software looks like, which is right here. If y'all folks don't know about it, I highly recommend for y'all folks who are into animation or, or trying to get into Blender animation to type it into Google. And this is the title of it, P-A-P-A-G-A-Y-O. And then learn as much as you can about it. Like do research, dig in, dig into it and learn from YouTube videos and build up the knowledge on how to use it. Because it's really, really simple. It's not a hard tool. It's just you have to know what to do. So pretty much an overview of what it does is it converts an audio file into these thing called these things called phenoms and basically they control the mouth of some sort of an animation so they create the animated uh, mouth shapes so what type of file type is basically a wave file type so you have to have a wave file so i figured out different ways to manipulate um, to ease the process to get a WAV file, I did have to go through um, when I first started using Audacity, which most people by this moment in time, if you're not brand new to the internet in general, you know that Audacity is an audio software that really does help um, with audio conversions, file conversions, and to get the correct um, audio files that you're looking for. Um, if you want to manipulate the audio in whatever ways it offers, the software really works well. And this is what I, I was using. I was actually using my microphone as well and a video that I would record like through my webcam, create the video, and then I would source it into Audacity and record that audio uh, envelope and have it pretty much stored here. And then I'll go to File. And export as an audio um, file type, which obviously I would export as a WAV file. So I can bypass that now. And how did I do that? Well, I found a way to convert a video, whatever video that I created through my webcam or wherever, as long as it's on my computer, I can convert the MP4 file into, let me show you real quick. I can convert the MP4 file into a WAV file. So how you do that, let me go and try to find it. Audio tools. It's this onlinevideoconverter.com. So this is a really, really dope tool. I highly re recommend for folks to use it if you want to pull off what I'm trying to showcase to your folks. So basically, I'll show you fo folks the video. Let me go real quick to a video that I pre-loaded, uh, that I already created. So this is my video here that I want to folks to see, uh, face rig mocap data. And this one I used um, face rig to create, a really dope tool that comes through Steam on the Steam platform. So I already showcased a lot of that stuff on my YouTube channel. You can check in different archives or look through my YouTube channel. You'll see I did a lot of face rig videos before I learned how to do 3D modeling and before I got into animation, learn, trying to learn how to animate and stuff like that. And I'm not, like I said, great at animation, but I'm still a student. I'm still learning and building up the process. So uh, face rig helped me to get the face, the facial markers in terms of what you see here on my face. So I don't have to put markers on my eyeballs. Obviously, nobody puts markers on their eyeballs. Uh, face rig has a really dope software that can actually track and scan over your face using your webcam just a basic webcam and then you get all these tracking markers that show up on your pretty much your pupil and your iris it tracks you know really really accurately and then it redistributes and sends that to the screen so you could see it and when you play let me turn the audio down you pretty much will see everything moving so when you blink your eyes these little tracking points show up across your eyelids and as you can see around my eyebrows around my whole entire face so this is how the face rig software actually works behind the scene and it's really dope I love the fact that face rig has this capability and also supplies us with the data of what we're tracking because 
what I was able to do is use this tracking data and manipulate it and bring it over to Blender. And on Blender, I learned from tons of YouTube tutorial videos on how to create the face rig. Um, or not actually create the face rig, but how to create the facial mocap, I should say. So how, how it works, it basically will use tracking data. So you have to have these little tracking points to implement into a Blender video. So you take your, your video, merge it onto Blender through the motion tracking software options that Blender supplies. And then Blender converts a lot of that information into the video distri uh, distributed across your screen. So you see the video on Blender. And then you can take Blender's markers through the motion tracking um, software built into it and you can use little tiny markers and place them and indicate where the tracking points are. So you literally have to physically move them with your mouse. You move them to the certain points. Let me pause this and say I wanted to move it here. I would move it here and then I would indicate and stretch out or basically size it to where the marker should be placed. You also can use this auto marker layout type of option. It selects um, the tracking points for you, but it's not as accurate as your mouse would be. So you would have to still move them in place. And then you would have to start playing around and manipulating um, how to save the tracking markers and how to keep the tracking markers in place throughout the whole entire course of your um, your buildup for your motion track, your motion tracking. So you would have to keep scrolling through and creating, it's almost like creating keyframes and pretty much once you're done all that you actually have built a face tracker motion capture basically a mocap facial tracker and then eventually this could come in in conjunction with it as well so you can use papagayo pretty much to do your lower mouth and the up upper lip lower lip and you can use the motion capture software to create pretty much a full-fledged uh, mocap across your face and you don't have to actually um, you know track every single point for your mouth so as long as you have the tracking of your eyes the upper portions and stuff like that it's really really dope what you can do on blender so that's the kind of stuff that I pulled off so far and eventually I want to merge it into controlling as a pipeline controlling the the uh, facial mocap for my characters that you see here and whatever whatever other characters that I I can create now a question on people's minds could be uh, right at this moment how did he create these characters so if you have those questions pretty much I use auto generators so I use character generators because I'm not the best at 3d modeling at all so I know some basics to 3D modeling, but I would never be able to create this at this moment in time. I would have to go through tons of training and tons of um, referencing. So I didn't even reference this character off of anything. This is created out of literally out of thin air using software. So uh, what software is it? The software is known as MakeHuman, and I'm not going to run it at this moment in time. But this is the software icon down here. But I'll go on to the web, and the reason why I'm not going to activate is because I have so many different software running and I don't want my actual live stream to freeze at the moment it does freeze uh, from time to time and if I do suffer a freeze or a crash from my computer then my live stream will stay running in the background and I'll try to pop back in hopefully I can pop back in that's why I'm doing it so early in the morning so um, let me see if y'all folks have any questions I'm gonna jump in um, to the commentary side of the live stream we got two people watching right now. All right. So if you have any questions or whatever, any concerns, just let me know. And um, I'll try to, you know, gear in with the commentary as I see fit. Because right now I have my um, smartphone in my hand with, with the live stream set up. So what I'm going to do now, um, I already talked about a whole bunch of stuff. Let me jump onto the Internet like I was saying I was going to do. And try to keep track of what I'm doing. Talking about tracking, face tracking, right? Uh, I'm going to keep track of what's mentally going on. So what we're going to do here, we're going to go to MakeHuman. 
the makehumancommunity.org. This is a website basically where you would start off your learning process if you never learned how to use it. You would also be able to um, gather the different assets in 3D uh, for your 3D characters or you can get pre-made 3D characters from this location. You also will get the download uh, for the software. That way you can get it onto your computer and you can get the add-ons for it for Blender and you can do different things. So Make Human is really, really dope. It's open source, open source tool to make 3D characters. And I try to pour this into most of my videos, my recent videos. So any video that you watch pretty much that I have a Make Human character, I talk about this. And um, one of the things that I didn't realize, which recently happened on um, YouTube recently, on the Ask NK channel, I don't know if y'all folks ever heard of Ask NK. Let me go jump into his channel real quick as fast as I can because I did say I was going to jump into this channel in a previous video and I did not. I kind of screwed up on that. So let me do Ask NK. There we go. This guy's channel is pretty dope um, in terms of the information that he provides. He's really, really a great, um, how would you say? reviewer so he like reviews 3d model type software he reviews gaming stuff like gaming software uh, all kinds of different software but he mostly focuses on 3d modeling and the elements behind 3d but you can go check out his about section if you want and read all of this stuff here and you'll see um i don't even know if he did any game coverage but i may have seen, may have seen one of his videos where he covered over a gaming platform I'm not sure but um like I said primarily he covers um, mostly the the differing elements to 3d and a lot of the software that's out there and this video here uh, free character creator I believe this is the one that was the one that was really really something that stood out to me that was it appealed in my mind because when I watched it, I think this is the one. I'm not sure. But let me go back to my history to see the very last video that I watched of his. And in the video, it showcases an older version of Make Human. And that's what really popped out in my mind that I was like, wow, this guy even dug into the older stuff. He literally does go for everything that's new like I do in other, other uh, creators on YouTube. In terms of how to and we find new stuff and we cover it and we come up with how to's or whatever we can come up with but he dug deeper which was dope I guess he used it before in the past and um, you never really know what a person knows before or after they come up with a video but sometimes they, they'll come out with some information and you'll say to yourself like wow you know that's pretty dope and the reason why I'm talking about that sorry about that just hopping around around you know wrong websites and stuff but um the reason why i'm talking about that is because in my mind my mind's telling me go for the latest thing the latest thing the latest thing it's not telling me to go backwards in time so make human has different versions so we got 1.2.0 alpha 1 i believe this is the very first make human version um that features a lot of this new stuff that we have actually this is the one 1.1.1.1. This is the very first version of Make Human that I ran into when I first started using Make Human. So there are some older versions. There's a 1.1.0, and then there's versions that are not visible here. And I said to myself when I watched this video, I said, What the hell is that? It really stood out to me and it opened my mind to realize that there's much more than meets the eye, even though you think you've seen everything so the internet is just full of all kinds of stuff and it's just it's amazing um, what you don't know you know all the things that you don't know and the things that you can know over time if you you know watch the right channels if you run into the right people other people have information beyond what you you've experienced and what you've you know covered in terms of information and that's what opens up more of the mental corridors in your mind and you start to realize like damn I could do more stuff 
and I wish I would have known this and that, you know, that kind of thing. So I don't know if this is it. I kind of found it a way to get to that information that he came up with, but I, it took me a little while to figure out where it was because it's not straightforward as to where the information is. So let me go to my playlist that I have. I just the reason why I'm focusing on this and I'm not on Blender is because I want to focus on this because of the the recent update or my recent update that I come up with from it in conjunction with what he came up with. So make human archive. Is this it here? Here it is. It's a make human archive and I don't know exactly how I found this but I found it and this is the older versions here so they have 0 0.8 0 0.9.1 alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3a alpha 3b so on and so forth so the one that i recently got is alpha 7 and i didn't even realize that like it goes all the way back to 2005 so make human was around for a long time that's like 14 years ago and the one that i recently downloaded this is where hold on this is where i came in 2014 around that time in terms of learning make human so i think i came in to learning make human around 2015 or so or 2016 i'm not really sure the accurate timing but whatever the case may be this older version was pretty dope so this what you see here is coming and stemming from the most latest version so I created this character these two characters on the most latest version of make human that's why it's so relevant for y'all folks to hear what I'm saying and to see what I'm saying so let me see if I can pull up the older version just real quick so y'all folks can see um, what 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 actually occurred and what happened while I was experimenting with it and testing it out thanks to ask NK like I said, he, he has a really dope channel. I highly recommend for y'all folks to check it out. A-S-K, ask, with an N-K on the back. So I want to see where the Blender, not Blender, the uh, Make Human thing came in at. I believe it came in at, on Program Files and then went to Make Human. Here it is, which is odd because it generally does not do that. It wouldn't come in that way. It would usually come in through documents. So we're going to go to double click this and run it up. And like I said, I didn't want to run Make Human, but I'm running the older version, which is running on, I believe, is running on Python. And I'm not a Python coder or anything like that. Hopefully it doesn't freeze. But this is how it looked. Look, one Make Human 1.0 Alpha 7. And it stood out to me it, it really did so uh it says a warning whatever sorry about the the nudity there uh, i'm gonna try to change that let me go into library and then go into clothing uh and then i i, I tried to add my own assets to it it didn't work but let's throw in that so she has some clothes so um yeah i i would like to warn you if you watch his video it, a lot of it majority of it has the nudity in it so if you have issues with that it's all good you know at least you know ahead of time um what makes this so dope is there's many different features that the the newer version doesn't have obviously because they took them out so they have all these different <laughs> sliders and stuff like that they have random they have custom these customs don't work i tried to add my own custom stuff into it and talking about custom i'm gonna show y'all folks how i created that newer character to some degree not 100 percent, but i used the custom um what do they call it target so i used the custom target that created the facial structure for this and then this character was created out of him i created him first and then I came up with his body type using random options so this random option here when you click create new it will try to create a new character so there goes another version of her 
now she's nude again so we'll keep creating new and it will keep trying to create different versions of her sorry about that now this this looks like a male like a male like a guy so this is the kind of software that's available it's really dope like I said what you can utilize now this guy is a male so now it looks a little bit more okay to use I guess <laughs> at the upper portion because it doesn't have the female breast and all that you know how you know people will say something about it if it's a female showing this and that whatever so let me go in and throw in the male outfit this is an outfit that I threw in before uh, the outfits do come with texture issues and stuff like that I figured out a way to fix it I can show y'all on blender towards the end of this session how I merged it on and all that um, but I'm not gonna focus on that I just wanted y'all folks to see try it out um, I'm, I'll give you the, the link to this location to try out the older version of make human if you're brand new to make human it may actually help you to understand you know where make human came from so I'll give you the link to this and I'll put this in a video's description area for this live stream so you can get to this um, where it shows you know all of the different versions of make human all the way back to that older version that I got on uh, around 2014 and then let's back out all the way leading to the newer version so this is the 1.1.1 and then the newer versions here 1.2.0 alpha 1 which started the community uh, software version back in the day it was just called make human and now it's called make human community the software release that they have available so that's the difference between the older versions to some degree and the newer versions in terms of naming and um, branding and stuff and the most latest version has some really advanced capabilities so um like i was saying i was going to lead y'all folks to the target that i used because targets on make human are really dope in terms of reshaping the body and the face and differing structures of the three asset and i use this one known as frozone so if y'all folks know anything about make human and have used it before i highly recommend for y'all folks to get this i'll put a link in the description to this one as well and this one gives you a character in the style of Disney Disney Pixar's character and this is him right here or the actual image of the character's uh, head shape turns into something similar to that so that's why you see on blender it looks like this guy here this is the shape that I got but how did I create him out of him so this guy is his son basically that's his dad pretty much he created him so I'm gonna be showing y'all folks in future videos how to make all of that stuff happen in this live stream I'm really not gonna go into that because it would take too long to showcase all of those details but I wanted to give y'all folks at least the history behind me being able to create this character and tying into the fact that there's even more history going even further back from when I first started with make human and thanks to and ask NK for helping me to find that I didn't even know he was gonna come up with a video like that but that blew my mind and mainly because he doesn't cover the make human software much I do tons of make human community software uh, videos in comparison to most um, people who put out videos on YouTube in general because a lot of people they tend for, for some reason in recent times to stray away from using it much and most definitely um, in relation to Blender 2.8, you know, I, I've looked all around and I haven't found many videos in conjunction with Make Human in reference to Blender 2.8. So that's why I'm doing as many videos as I can day to day, but mainly to showcase my learning process in the animation department and in the modeling department for 3D because I'm still a student and I just want to showcase what I've learned so more and more people can learn and catch up with what I'm doing as well as be able to go beyond what I'm doing so as a how-to creator that's really important to help other people around the world to actually gravitate and grasp the, the knowledge base that you have and it's really powerful when you can spread your knowledge or whatever you gathered 
from other people and keep that love spreading around and more and more people can can benefit you know what i'm saying and that's one of the ways to help you know change bring change to the world and all that so that's that's the reason why i'm doing this why i'm a how-to creator why i'm doing this for blender and also for the make human community as well so besides that let's get into more of the animation fun part um what i i was trying to do in terms of creating that papagayo stuff with blender 2.8 papagayo does not work and because the actual original developers of it they did not create the add-on yet so there's no add-on for blender for blender 2.8 but there's previous versions and the add-on works for previous versions so i figured out a workaround and this is more of a bonus for those who are watching my live stream still or about to and due to jump into the live stream or due to jump into this pre-recorded video once it becomes recorded onto youtube for those who watch my videos longer and longer you're going to get more benefits and in terms of some amazing things that i was able to pull off the average person who's using blender 2.8 they're probably not thinking about papagayo and they're saying to themselves well i'm gonna wait for the add-on but i decided to say to myself i want to go further even though the add-on isn't present i'm gonna try to get it working you know, you got to go beyond the limitations or beyond what you feel limited to and what you are offered. Sometimes you can go beyond if you think outside of the box. So that's what I tried to do. And what I did is I decided to go back to Blender 2.79B. So I'm going to show you an end result in Blender 2.8 um, where I was able to pull it off. And actually, I can show you in a video, but the video doesn't really tell you that it's from Blender 2.8. So, why do I keep going back to this steam thing? I don't know. Uh, I have this. Let me sh shut this off right there. There we go. So, I'll go to my video, my recent video, so y'all folks can see the video itself. And you can go back and check it out if you want to check it out. Um, let me go to home real quick. All right. Just trying to reset the browser so it can come up directly to my channel. Okay. So... This video here it says Blender 2.8 EV facial animation test. This one was created on Blender 2.8. And most people will not realize that, but it's possible to use Papagayo to, to control the mouse shapes. So this video shows that effect. So I'm going to throw it on and try to pause it and then turn down the audio. But the audio is working. And you'll get to see um, all this is happening from the help of using Blender in conjunction with Papagayo. And I did not, at this point, I did not know how to adjust my motion tracking to make the motion tracking move the rest of the upper portion of the face. So I didn't have that set up yet because I felt like I was stumped at that point using the motion tracking because my actual webcam does not have depth sensing so i don't have a depth camera if you have a depth sensing camera like an iphone x then you can go into more tracking points and you can literally map out the 3d information on your face using a webcam or whatever uh the iphone i i iphone x camera it will detect where your your points and the data points should be located in 3d so then it'll be able to reproduce all those tracking points in 3d and then you can map them out off of, you know, using Blender's motion tracker. Or you also could use some sort of a code that maybe an, an advanced coder can put in and input the data's points into like node connections and stuff like that. I don't know exactly how they do it. I've seen some videos where people were able to do it using code to assist in doing it. So let me hit the play. And as you can see, the mouth motion is moving and I played around and tried to create some kind of animation with the arms and stuff so that was a trial that was very successful and it leads me into trying to do more into um, feeling that I can actually do more and knowing that I can do more because I have the software at hand so how did I do all of that I already talked about some of the basics to the formula of it but you definitely need Papagayo so it would behoove you to get this software 
you can go into the internet um, and find it let's see if I can find the actual location I think I have it stored into my browser so let me go into make human and try to see if I can find Papagayo uh, actually I think I have it into blender is in blender I think so blender let's see Papagayo it's really important to have favorites right for your internet because without the web favorites it's going to be hard for you to be able to track um different things that you want to so i don't see it let me just type it onto google papagayo so that's how i originally found it and this is it right here the papagayo lip syncing support and from here i'll try to put this link in the video's description area as well so y'all folks can get to this and this is the software as you can see and you want to go with one of the downloads whatever computer you have should be able to help you to get the download uh, I highly recommend for y'all folks to have a Windows computer to do all this stuff because I know that it's compatible with everything that I've been doing using Windows so the most latest version for Windows is 2.0 b1 for the Papagayo and once you get it on your computer you're very closer much closer to where I was able to get to so if you do that <clears throat> also get like I said the online video converter and one of the other formulas that I've used um, in the past is using Google Chrome <coughs> what I'm gonna do at this moment is I'm gonna cut off my web browser and actually I'm gonna end this right here that video that I was throwing up and let me see if anybody's commenting because I neglected to check in the comments we got uh, John Blanco love your work been missing your stream working long hours trying to get the time to dig into blender yeah man I haven't been coming up with videos because I've been trying to train myself and learn as much as possible so um, thanks a lot for showing up by the way and to all those who choose to show up in the future we're gonna go to task manager and I'm gonna end this session on a web browser so I can reduce the amount of load on my computer and I'm gonna jump into Google Chrome because if I try to jump into Google Chrome with Mozilla Firefox on at the same time my computer may freeze for sure so from my 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 experiences of computer crashes that's where it happens a lot and also if I'm trying to run animations on blender so let's end this task by ending the task I can bring it back up and I can have all these um, you know tabs come back up once I bring it back up see my computer right now is at 99% it was at 100% and now it's reducing down as soon as I cut off the browser you can see that it's going down so that should help me a little bit now I'm gonna throw on Google Chrome and with Chrome the benefits of using Google Chrome is that you can get to use Google Docs and with Google Docs Google Docs will give you the ability to actually convert your speech to text which is pretty pretty awesome that I was able to figure that out I don't know how all this stuff came in, into conjunction, but for many, many years, I've been using so much stuff that my brain just is able to seize anything at any moment in time that I need. If I need something, I will make it work. That's that's how my brain works now. Um, thanks a lot to using it, the power of the Internet and all this other stuff. I also have technology in my head, obviously, so having being a techie helps as well. But um, what we're going to do is go to more here. We use this uh, little box and then pull up Google Docs really quick. Quick way to access it. And thanks to Google's products, this is possible. I really do appreciate Google for offering this, this up. But this was an awesome, awesome find that I found out that helped me to go from speech to text. Because when you're going with Papa Gallo, bring back Papagayo when you get the wave file dropped in here it says drop wave audio file once you drop the wave file in there it's gonna convert and you're gonna see all of the different things coming up but you're gonna need text to match your audio so the amount of audio throughout the whole entire wave file so say you recorded yourself singing for a minute or so right or 30 seconds that full length of the sound envelope will be distributed all across this screen here 
and you'll have to move the bar and everything and you'll get confused in terms of what's going to be generated because you're going to say to yourself like um, what should I do now well basically you have to supply spoken text so you have to you have to write out every little thing that you sung if it was a, a song that you sung so you have to write out the lyrics right down in here literally every word for word or else the phenoms will not be reproduced properly and the timing will be off so you won't have a lip sync and the mouth motions will not follow the phenoms so that's the kind of thing that papagayo that i learned about and through trial and error it took me some time to figure out why the the there was huge gaps gaping holes in between my audio because i only typed maybe like one sentence when i had a whole minute worth of words and in, in my in my actual audio file so I'm gonna show, like I said, I'm gonna show y'all folks that in a future video how all of that comes out. But this is basically the brain, the thinking process, the thought process behind it. So I'm trying to give y'all folks a little brainstorm as to what to confront, what to see when you confront it, and um, what's gonna happen when you get there. You know, kind of you're gonna get stumped starting out when you get on Papagayo, and you're gonna say, "What do I do next?" So you drop the waveform in there, you'll see it, and then it's gonna bring up the phenoms and all that but you won't get all of them you'll get like maybe a few of them and you're gonna be like what the hell so you have to drop in the full the full line of text in there and to bypass having to write it word for word this is the benefit here so uh, let's see we're going to some sort of an open document un untitled document doesn't matter and from using Google Docs you can go for the add-ons that they have on Google Docs. So you have file, edit, view, insert, format, tool, whatever. We're going to go to add-ons. And on the add-ons, they have differing options that you can utilize. You can go to get add-ons if you don't have any of these. And try to get the speech recognition sound writer. And then go to start once you get it synchronized to your Google Docs. When you do that, it is pretty powerful. Now check this out. All you got to do is hit this record button. And I'm going to start recording what I'm saying. Hey folks, what's going on? I am about to launch a live stream on YouTube about Blender. I think it's going to be pretty interesting, so let's get it. So you hit the stop button, and look at that. The text comes out like that. Voila. So it's much more user-friendly um, than a lot of other tools that I've used for using you know speech to text you can also use your computer speech to text but it may take some time to get it to set up or whatever this is very simple click the add-on activate it hit the red button boom and that's all you need to do from that point you go and you highlight use control C you copy this and you merge it onto Papagayo as you see fit now you see how I'm talking into the microphone right now you're not going to have to talk into the microphone. All you got to do is use that video that you pre-recorded and then make sure that the volume is up pretty decent and your microphone is near your actual speaker. And that would automatically create your full text of what you wanted. And then you just drop it in there where it says uh, spoken text. I'm, I'm going to do control V to drop it in. Well, actually, it won't allow me to drop it in because I don't have any audio. So let me just throw up the audio. Uh, let me go real quick to an audio file location. Go to my music folder, voice tests, and I will drop in something um, that will be suitable to fit in there. So I need a wave file. So let's see properties. Oh, there goes a, a, a wave file right there. Let me cancel this. It says testing voice dot wave so we'll move that in there and drop it in so now you see there goes the papagayo stuff is not really much right they didn't put much so let's play it I would like to try something new and see what happens if this works so this is the audio that I created for that video that y'all folks saw of me manipulating the you know on blender with that character blender 2.8 so what I'm gonna do is control V or right click and paste and then there goes the text in there and there goes the phenoms down at the bottom 
see these little AE says uh, AI MBP O etc all these little uh, markers or whatever and then over here it has the words that I typed hey folks what's going on I'm about to launch a live stream on YouTube yada yada so this doesn't match obviously but I just wanted y'all folks to see it doesn't match what I what I said here in this actual um, wave format uh, recording so if I hit play obviously it's gonna play but it's not gonna match but you'll see the mouth motion here so you can also change this is just an icon to show you what it's gonna look like you can change it from mouth one to mouth two We can go to Gary C let me hit play so you can see what I'm talking about see so basically Papagayo does that let me change it to that character now how does it work you really don't have to know how it works uh, actually you don't have to know how it works all you need is the export in terms of how does it work on blender you don't really need to know because it's pretty dope what it will do let me go to export you just click this little export button down at the bottom bottom right and what it's going to create is what is known as a dat file a dat file this is all you really need once you convert your waveform, you get your phenoms working, everything spaced properly the way that you want it to look, and the mouth motion is pretty much accurate to the best of your ability in terms of using Papagayo. You can watch on YouTube also other videos of how people were able to space it. I'm not the master at spacing all of that stuff and synchronizing it, so I'm, I'm not really interested in becoming great at that. I'm interested in the DAT file. That's all I'm interested in. But eventually I'll probably try to work my knowledge in. I'm not really going to put up tutorials on it because there's tons of tutorials out there that people already did. So what, what we're going to do here, I'm just going to save it. Boom, save it as something. And then when you're done, you got your dat file. Now you got to go to Blender. Now on Blender, if we had Papagayo for Blender 2.8, it would be one of the add-ons here. And it would say Papagayo. You can click it, and then you would be able to throw the dat file right in and start to see your character's mouth moving when you hit the play button for the timeline. But obviously, like I said earlier, it does not work on Blender 2.8. So the workaround is let me let me save this. Actually, I already saved it. So I'm gonna exit out and I'm gonna go into Blender 2.79B. So y'all folks can see that. So let's discard the changes. I don't care about the changes. I don't, I'm not worried about that because I already saved it. So we're going to go in the older version of Blender or the more stable version instead of using Blender 2.78. And what we're going to use is a software that I talked about earlier, which is the Make Human Community software. I love this software. It is is really, really, really highly recommended by me and by tons of other people. But it is amazing because it works in conjunction with Blender. The guy who threw it up, the first uh, developer known as Manuel Bastioni, he was very dedicated to this thing and got it jump, jumping off and working for us. And he also now has a team that works on it separate from him. He no longer works on Make Human. He no longer works on another add-on that he threw into Blender to make Blender become more easy, more user-friendly, more something that the average person could actually learn how to use. So here we go. I think Manuel Bastioni, when he first started with Blender, he was probably frustrated that all he got was a cube in the screen. And the cube is obviously not here because I got rid of it. But when you first start with Blender, it's very, very frustrating to start off with just a primitive shape of a cube because there's no other way to learn how to use it unless you bring in some third party assets from the outside of Blender. Because you're going to be stuck with the cube and you're going to say to yourself, what am I going to do with it? So that's why, you know, I was frustrated when I first started. It took me five years to pick Blender back up after I dropped it. And now, fast forward about five, almost six years later. It's going on six years now that I've been, that I've known of Blender. But only close to a year that I've actually been knowledgeable on how to use it. But pretty much, fast forward now, 
I can use add-ons and all kinds of different things because of, you know, trying to drill myself and train myself off of YouTube videos and tons of how-to creators on how to do this stuff. So here goes the Make Human Community tab for the add-on. Uh, if you don't know about add-ons, you can check tons of videos about it. For Blender add-ons, just type in Blender add-ons, or you can go onto the internet, onto Google, and learn how to use add-ons and how to bring the add-ons on. You can also watch some of my videos, but um, that's not really too important. You don't have to watch all of my videos or some of them about it. You can watch anybody's video. But once you learn about Blender add-ons, you'll know that in the older versions, the tabs are on the left. In the newer version, the tab is on the right toolbar here. So what you want to do, I can import the human that I had in there with this newer Blender um, add-on. But I don't want to use this newer version here. I want to use the older way to do it, which is known as the MHX2. And the reason being is because the MHX2, or make, also known as the Make Human Exchange, it has the Papagayo tie-in. It ties in this thing known as Moho. It's a Moho file, which is also known as the DAT file. So it will give you the ability to animate the face and get things moving. And it's pretty awesome because it's it basically cuts out all the hard, difficult process of you having to learn how to do 3D modeling. That's the base mesh you get off of Make Human. And then how to rig the character. It bypasses all that stuff and it does it for you. So it is, it is amazing. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to throw up um, Make Human. And I'll get rid of Papagayo off of here just to reduce a lot of the stuff that's going on. And I'll also get rid of Google Chrome. Hopefully, like I said, my computer doesn't crash. But if it does suffer a crash, like I said, I'll come back. Let's see if I got any comments. We got John. He says, I've been using voice to note a Google Chrome extension that works well. Yeah, that's what's up, man. So uh, while that's running in the background... I'm actually going to throw up the latest version of Make Human, uh, Make Human 1.2.0 Alpha 3. And this is going to give me um, the ability to pretty much create a Make Human Exchange export. So when you get the exported data, it will incorporate itself into Blender, but it also is going to come on Blender with a full fledged armature, full fledged rig for your character. And with all of that stuff that I was talking about, where you can merge the uh, dat, the dat file through Moho and stuff like that, and all that's going to be showcased over here. You're going to see all the options show up. So I'm just waiting for Make Human to come up. Here we go. We got Make Human up, and I'm going to throw in a character. I'm not going to build a character because it it will take some time to build the character from scratch. But I'll throw in a character and then merge it over so y'all folks can see. And again, like I said, I, I apologize for the nudity, but that's how Make Human starts out. So let's throw in Fro. Let's throw in Fro. Actually, this is what I called him first. It's not Fro. It's, um, man, the naming is all crazy <laughs> with my characters. Uh, I think his name is Zink. Zinky or something like that. So there you go. This is him without having the stylish hair that I threw up for him. And the the previous uh, session that I was showing you on Blender. So let's go to export. And we're going to go to make him an exchange. So you go to the export option, you go to make him an exchange once your character is up and running, which is very easy to get a character in there. Use your sliders and play around with whatever options you have here and your character will be set up. So once you're done, you go to make him an exchange, which is automatically tied into the make human community software. And that's a, the difference between the previous versions of Make Human and the newer version, you have this tied in. You don't have to get the add-on for Make Human itself. So you do, however, have to tie in the MHX2 add-on for Blender. So you're gonna have to get that from the software uh, download itself. So I'll try to get y'all folks the software download, but you can check in my previous videos about Make Human, the most recent video about the Make Human Exchange um, add-on. You can check in my archives and you'll find a video for it on how to get the add on on Blender. So let's go and explore this. So we're going to hit import MHX2. We're going to go to override exported data. That's really important to click after you try to import it. So if you don't, 
hit this check mark, you're not going to activate the ability to get the face shapes, the shape keys, as well as the Papagayo stuff. So I believe you most definitely should most definitely should hit the override exported data. So let's go with face shapes, shape keys. We make sure these are activated so you get the full functionality of what the Make Human Exchange gives you the ability to do. And there's no coding, no high technical stuff you have to do is just clicking the little things that you have to click like you see here. Uh, then you got rigging, leave this as add rig and custom shapes. Also leave this as exported, you can change it how you see fit in terms of if you want to hire advanced rig or whatever other rigs that you want. But you want the exported rig, it's the basic one. Um, the one that I have, you go to pose on make human. I put and set it at, at default. This skeleton here is accessed through the pose and animate option on make human. And from there, you have the options to switch it from none. So when you're at none, that means that your 3D avatar slash character has no bones, zero bones. And the bones are used to animate the character. Without the bones, you can't move it. So you have to think of it as a human body, just like a regular human. Imagine a human body without bones. You won't be able to move around. You'll just be like a worm on the floor, pretty much. Or like a person who is, um, you know, when a person hurts their back and then eventually, you know, they get, what do they call that? When you hurt, <laughs> when you mess up your back or whatever paralyzed you know you, you can end up getting paralyzed and it's not a funny thing i did kind of giggle about it but it's not it's not funny so um i was giggling at the fact that i forgot what you know the word paralyzed sometimes you have a brain fart or whatever while you're doing live so there you go with that nobody's perfect so here we go we got the face rig i i chose uh the default it comes with a face rig and that's what you want in terms of being able to animate the face if you choose other options you won't get the face to show up so there's no facial bones and all the other ones besides the unity one which is works with unity but you don't get the full face you only get the eyes the tongue and the jaw so that's all you get for that so if you want the full face you have to choose the default one which gives you the ability to tie in the mouth motions and everything so once you do that make sure you did that before you export through the make human exchange then it will come in as the full-fledged um, fully rigged character and armature controls that you need. So after you get this all set up here, all you gotta do is hit this upper arrow and find the location on your computer where you put the actual um, export. So this is an import on MakeHuman, it's an export. So the exported file for MakeHuman, you hit these three tiny dots, I'm going kind of fast, but Pretty much I'm making this video for people who already have been following all my YouTube videos for Make Human. So here you have these three tiny dots, you click it, and on the three tiny dots you can locate on your computer where to drop that Make Human Exchange file. So mine is in my Make Human subfolder and Racy, the name Racy. So I guess I called him Racy. Let's see. Let's see if this is the one. Um let's go back. Uh, actually, it won't show up here. Let me go real quick to that folder. So we're going to go to make human and go to racy. Let's see. I think it's zinc. I don't know. I'm so confused with the naming. So right here, red hair. So the one with the red hair and the outfit, this is racy. So he's not racy. He's zinc. Let's go to zinc. Zinky. I might change the name again. So here it is. Yeah, this is the zinc character here. Because the hair is different. Yep. So the one that I did for Zinky is right here. Zinky, uh, dot MHX 2 So that's the one there. If you wanted to change it to that, I would go to Make Human and then find his folder. So you have to create folders, subfolders upon subfolders in order to track everything you're doing. All these are my different characters that I created. Got tons of characters that I've been creating. Once you get free software, man, you're gonna go off. You're basically gonna keep trying to generate as much as you can, which is the greatest idea because maybe you wanna create a full-fledged film or something in the future, right? So you wanna create as many characters that you can 
create starting out and then eventually narrow down what you think is going to be the ones that you want in your actual footage that's my idea i don't know if you want to do it that way but that's how i see it the more i have the better in terms of 3d characters so oh we got john cat i just shared this on facebook oh thanks a lot john cat i really do appreciate it bro um so yeah and oh thanks a lot for showing up now all you got to do from here once you save it it becomes that i'm just backtracking so y'all folks can see the full process so we're going to go to three objects and find it so you got to find it so you basically track it this is your tracking mechanism or i guess a more of an archive archival folder scroll or whatever you can scroll through the folders you can also jump through folders this way on blender when you're trying to import or export so we go to make human and we're going to go find where's that that folder zinc zinky boom and then we're going to go click this right here so that's him and click import and from that it should merge the character in hopefully y'all folks learned a little bit about that in terms of you know the the file location thing because it's more about files on 3d after you get you create your characters you have to know where you want to place your characters and how to manage your files and all that if you don't do that you're going to lose track and you're going to be like what the hell am i doing it gets confusing if you're really all over the place with your files so all right now we got the character in and he's posed really cool whatever it doesn't matter what we're focused on is his face because we want to get the facial structure moving right now the face is not moving we got all kinds of stuff going on he doesn't look that great the bones are in the way and actually we're on pose mode in blender so if you know about blender they have different modes depending on what you choose to click if you choose to select something with your left click mouse button on blender 2.8 is left click enabled to control the actual viewport on blender 2.79 b and the previous versions it's right click enabled starting out and you would have to go to file go to uh let's see blender preferences or user preferences here so you go to user preferences and you would have to change the default in order to control it i'm just talking about this because some people get lost between blender 2.8 uh and going back in time in terms of the older versions of blender because they may not know about this so you go to input i think yeah go to input and then you would choose your selectivity here in terms of what controls the viewport in terms of using your mouse left click or right right click enabled so see where it says select with you have to make sure you select left if you're used to using your left click mouse button to control everything that's going on when i first started with blender it was right click enabled and i didn't know what to do i didn't know how to set this default thing i didn't even know it was defaulted to right click and that's what really stumped me and i couldn't figure out blender when i first started because i'm more of a left clicker than a right clicker so let's go uh go to object mode with the modes and right now what's selected is the bones as you can see here that's kind of good but i want to show you some stuff real quick hold on real quick if i can bounce out of the bones i don't know why the viewport is acting up but i should be able to select outside of the bones and whatever textures that i'm trying to select is not allowing me to, to deselect so let me hit the a key to deselect so there you go so now we're not selected on anything so this select deselect selections all this selecting stuff is really important to understand on blender this is what takes you a little bit further besides knowing the navigation because selectivity will activate like i said what you see here in terms of the, the mode controls so if you understand that basics with Blender, then you start to move further. If you don't, then you're going to be lost, like trying to figure out why the hell, where's my pose mode? Where's this? What's that? I don't know how to switch modes, you know, or why, what mode I should be in. So it took me a while to figure that out. But once you get that down pack, then you can merge into other things. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to select the hair. So you see it's highlighted in green. And I'm going to go um, from the hair, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to make it look a little bit better. Um, with the newer version of Blender, Blender 2.8, this is uh, listing for properties is going to be listed in a vertical 
as opposed to a horizontal. And in the older version, it's listed in horizontal in terms of the properties itself. These properties control the viewport and what's in the viewport. So what I'm going to is the material properties, which gives the material data controls for this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change a setting if I can find it. Uh, let's see, go to settings here and where it says viewport alpha, I'm going to change this to alpha blend. When you do that, it should help out a lot of the different stuff. Actually, I didn't need to change that one. Sorry about that. Let me go back to opaque. So these blend modes is different from the mode over here, the object mode. This blend mode stuff that you see, this is just for the texture. The, the mode object mode, um, edit mode, texture paints, all this stuff. This is also could pertain to the texture, but it could also pertain to the bones. So let me go over, change this to alpha blend. I just want y'all folks to be able to see some of this stuff. I like to cover this a lot. Some people don't understand it or probably get lost starting out with that part too. And I'm trying to click on the eyeballs. It's not activating the eyeballs. If you don't get the eyeballs to activate, you can go into the outliner. This is known as the outliner, which basically details every single three asset inside your viewport. So we're gonna go over here to Zinke. This is the asset for Zinke. I just got rid of the bones. This is the armature itself. I hit the little eye and you can make the bones go away. You can also hit the H key. But if I hit the H key now, since I'm selecting on the face or the body, it's going to hide the body. See that? So you use alternate H will bring the body back. The alternate key on your keyboard and the H key. And the H key will make it disappear. Now I can select the bones. So I just double clicked and selected the bones. Now I can hide the bones if I want to. It's another way of doing it. See that? So that's the kind of stuff that it took me some time to learn on Blender as well. Let's go to the high poly object here. So the high poly right there. Now it should give me the ability to change the opaque viewport alpha to alpha blend. And there we go. Now the eyes are coming in. And for a while, it took me a long time, but I used to try to create node connections to make this work. But I didn't realize back then that all you got to do is go to viewport alpha and change it from opaque to alpha blend. So now we got that. <clears throat> now you're not going to see the full fledged look on how it's supposed to really look unless you go from um, the viewport shading from where you're at. Right now we're defaulted to texture, I think. No. We were defaulted to. What was we defaulted to? Material. Okay, we, we were defaulted in material. You want to go to render just to see how it renders and looks. And right now it's rendering in cycles, so I need a lamp. There's no lamp at the point of where we're at. And I got to be careful because <clears throat> in cycles, your computer takes much more load. And it will take a lot of time to render sometimes, depending on your computer. One second, what I'm going to do is highlight everything by using the A key. And I'm going to deactivate the camera, the lamp, and the point light because that's what I got in my viewport and I'm going to use the scale key or the S key to scale it down so I can bring it within this perspective of the lamps that's down there because the character came in as a really large character left click one time and then zoom in scroll up zoom in and there goes my character there use the control key the, the mouse scroll wheel to press them both together and you can scroll in and out like this this is using the control key and the mouse scroll wheel. You have to depress the mouse scroll wheel, by the way. So once you do that, scroll in a little bit. And now we got the character zoomed in and with respect to the lamp. So now we got the lamp right there. And that should provide the lighting source that we need if we try to go rendering. And like I said, it takes a lot of load on the computer. So my computer might freeze. Hopefully it doesn't. Go to render. And there you go. So there goes the character. This is Blender 2.79B. And as you can see, the eyes is doing good. 
Um, let me zoom in a little bit. Scroll it. All right, folks. I think I'm back. I do apologize for that freeze. Um, I figured out some really cool stuff with with um, Mozilla Firefox and using the YouTube Live. Uh, actually, I don't have Mozilla Firefox up and running now, and I got the live stream on. As long as you have OBS and you click Start Streaming, if your computer crashes and you didn't end your session, you should be able to get back to your live session. So let's see if it jumps Change back in. My life. I can see what Turn the audio down on my phone. And that is pretty powerful because that's more, more of the most latest updates for YouTube Live. They came up with a new way to do it. Yep, I'm back on. So what you're staring at is Blender 2.79 trying to load up. And now we're going to throw back that character in there. I'm going to try to fast forward or rewind back. I don't know how you want to call it. Let's go to import. And um, we're going to try to throw Zinc back in or Zinky back in. Override exported data. Face shapes. Face shape drivers. And import. And then I'll just um, try to size them back to where I was at. But I'm not going to worry too much. Actually, I'm not going to worry too much about running it in cycles and rendering it because that was what caused the crash. And instead, I'm going to bypass all of that stuff. I just wanted to show you all folks things you're going to encounter when you're trying to get um, Blender running and trying to get your character in. So you wanted to render it in the older version of Blender or whatever. You're going to have different experiences. And that was an error. Let me get rid of those and scale it down. The reason why I'm scaling it down is because I'm going to save this once I'm done what I need to do. Y'all folks will see. All right, we're going to zoom in and not move too fast. So there we go. We got the bones. We got everything set up. Um, with the Make Human Exchange, we should be able to get the information showing up. And right now, I think everything is selected, so it's not going to show up. So you deselect everything, hit the A key, and then just select the bones itself. So when you select the bones itself, now it will bring up the full options for your Make Human Exchange add-on. If you're selected on the body, or any other mesh it's going to show up as well but you won't have the controls for the shape keys you can go down here where it says license and you still won't have what you need to create that uh, the motion capture for the face the face um, movement not really motion capture but it looks like motion capture it's the papagayo stuff with the moho file so what you need to do is just select the bones and then you'll see you can drag down a little bit further and now you got the face shapes and vismes. So there goes the vismes here. Here goes all the different vismes. Um, that will be very similar to the vismes and the phenoms that you would get from Papagayo. You don't have to load up Papagayo anymore. All you needed was that dat file because the dat file is going to load right here where it says load moho. So you go to load moho and you just look for your uh, that file that you saved and mines is let's see in my documents hit the up arrow once go to three objects actually no uh, it's in music so I got to go to music voice tests my sub subfolder for voice tests and then I can go to any dat file that I stored on it and that will let's go like voice one test dot dat so that that's basically going to create the mouth shapes. So we hit load moho. Now, if you tried to load it through on Blender 2.8, the the Make Human Exchange add-on is on Blender 2.8, but the moho file doesn't work on it. So when you try to load the moho file, it won't work on Blender 2.8, but it does work on Blender 2.79b. And What's pretty dope is all you needed to do is get the Make Human Exchange character in, click the bones, select the bones, activate this 
that file and then go to file and save as it's pretty much a very minimal amount of things you have to do you don't have to go and change the textures and change all of those opegs to blend mode like i was showing and all that that was just for people who want to render out and test it like that so what we're going to do now we're going to make sure we locate our make human folder or subfolder that i created not to be mistaken with the the actual official make human folder because that one is separate from the the one that i created we're going to go to the zinc character and we're going to call it zinc dot blend since i already named these zinky 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 whatever i'm just going to give it a different name so i don't overwrite any of these here because i have these set up already so we're going to go to save as blend file so now it becomes a blend file that you can import or not really import but you can open on blender 2.8 or blender 2.8 beta because it's in a beta phase right now it's not in the full release yet so uh, let's go to blender 2.8 now we can ex exit this out so we're gonna hit the x that way i'm not worried about the crashing too much it won't crash hopefully it won't crash and we're gonna throw up uh blender again now we're going up in blender 2.78 beta and let me reload my live session to see if people are going to come in comment communicate or whatever if not y'all folks will get to see it after the video or live stream is recorded pre-recorded onto youtube so for now we're just waiting for blender 2.8 there we go blender 2.8 is up we go to file go to open and we find that zinc.blend file click it and you can load the ui as it was or you can uncheck the ui if you don't want the old interface to tie into the new interface then you just uncheck that load ui and then you go to open blender files that's what i'm going to do because i don't want the old settings i want my newer settings for blender which is defaulted so click open blender file and there we go there it goes tied into the newer interface that i have created or that blender developers created but i have um configured the way i wanted it to look so now my character's in there and guess what it got everything in there now now we're going to jump into fi uh, fixing this part that's why i wanted y'all folks to see so now you can understand what i'm gonna do here so i'm gonna go to the eyeballs and remember I said that the properties is vertical here as opposed to horizontal. So that's how Blender 2.78 is reconfigured. So we're going to go down to this materials tab, materials data tab. We can kind of close this a little bit because that right there is the shader editor. Um, what we're going to do is go to settings. And right now Blender is actually set up defaulted to cycles. So in Blender 2.8, when you go to cycles to the properties, when you're in cycles and you go to the properties, you won't be able to get the same settings that you get from Blender 2.79B. So you have to switch to Eevee to get the same settings. So you go to Eevee in your render engine, and then you'll see the settings come up here. So you go to settings, out, uh, blend mode, opaque, and switch it to alpha blend, and boom. Now your eyes is in there and so on and so forth so you do it with the other parts that need to be the alpha blended because it's a transparency that basically the image file for these graphics that are showing up these graphics are created using um they probably did texture painting or something like that and it became a png file and those png files uh are transparent they created transparencies so that's why that is like that all right so what we got to do now all we got to do is hit the play button and you'll be able to see that it works really smooth so let me hide the bones hit the H key and hit the play button and you'll see characters talking now this character doesn't have teeth 
I didn't add teeth to it. I apologize, but now y'all folks see that it's possible to use Papagayo running through Blender 2.8. From that point on, now it will be up to you to try to learn how to incorporate motion capture data. So the motion capture data would be able to control the upper portions of the face like I was talking about. And then eventually you can merge that into creating a full-fledged animation um, and animating your character as far as you can go. So in the future, I'm going to show you all folks how to do that, what I've been learning with the motion capture data. But um, I have a, a technique that I believe is going to be uh, more of like a breaking or a breakthrough type of a technique to animate the face um, in the, a lot of the previous videos that I watch on YouTube they're pretty good they're really really good and they help me to get to the point that I'm at and as a student I'm I think I tripped over something that will be really profound for the average student to be able to do this to pull off a full facial mocap using um, Papagayo plus using the motion capture data um, you know the markers that you can put in here so you can put tracking markers and all that stuff um, before I do that and before I get into that type of session I'm gonna show y'all folks an overview just a slight overview as to what that entails so we can go over here and just shut off as many things as we don't want so we right click and delete I don't need compositing I don't need animation well I need the animation I can leave that there I don't need shading really because as you can see it's already created um, in terms of the textures and stuff I don't need that one I don't need the UV editing I don't need sculpting so on and so forth so I'm reducing the load on these areas so all I got is layout and modeling which is basically the same so I don't need redundancy so we're gonna get rid of modeling and all we're gonna do is hit hit the plus over here and go into uh, VFX and then go to motion tracking so now this is what you want to work on learning which is the motion tracking side of blender and this is going to help you to go further to build out and to really learn what you can do in terms of creating you have to open up your mind and say to yourself that this is a free tool i have the ability to learn as much as i want and i can go as far as i want based on what the knowledge is out there that's provided and even past you can try to go past the knowledge that's provided that's out there and the reason being is because like I said it's free it's open source so why limit yourself to what others have done why don't you try to learn more and to exceed past your limitations that you already are at how do you do that well it takes a lot of hours a lot of time to keep watching and watching and you know start thinking outside the box like I said so what I was able to do I don't code anything I'm not a coder like I say in a lot of videos so everything is with my with my mouse so what I did was I would open here go to open that's to open up a video file that little open in the center is to open up video files so we're gonna open up a video file that I captured and go out of that uh, video go to videos and go to Blender Animations where I stored it at and that mocap one face rig mocap data I think this is it here mp4 we're gonna open up the clip and as you can see there goes my face right there and this is the motion capture data from from um, what I created on face rig in terms of whatever I stored so this is my face these are the data points how do you use this? You're basically going to use everything here to create what you need, as well as some of these things here. You also could use your timeline because the timeline helps you to scrub back and forth as to what you're going to be doing. Now, what's up here in the upper right, this is just your, your actual viewport, but it's your viewport being displayed through the virtual camera that's tied in. Now, keep in mind, virtual camera that's tied into your viewport, what does those virtual cameras do? The virtual cameras, in conjunction with the mocap, helps you to be able to create what is known as 3D empties. And these 3D empties are basically space fillers or controllers. 
So they are taking the place of an object that you can put in 3D space, but they also can be a controller for an object or for a bone. So you can use the empties to control bones and move things around without displaying it as you render it. And it doesn't have to be a bone itself. It can literally just be an empty marker. So that's pretty powerful that you can utilize a video when you create your video, you put your tracking points, tracking data in there, and you trace the, the, the markers by using this add marker part here or detect features. This is the auto detect features. So if I click detect, it's going to try to auto detect all of the markers that's on the screen that it can, and then give you these little yellow uh, boxes. Now, when you first click it, it's going to have everything selected. So remember I was talking about select, selectivity, stuff like that. That makes a difference, like I said, even with the motion tracking. So when you click, left click, it deselects everything. When you hit the A key, the A key will select everything. So when you're doing that kind of stuff with motion tracking data and these, uh, these actual tracking points, it makes a difference as to how you're going to activate and store the data and how you're going to get that data to track properly and effectively. And it took me trial and error to figure it out because I did not know how to do any of this stuff. And watching the YouTube videos, some of the YouTube videos didn't help me at all. I was trying to figure it out and I'm like, damn, what did, what did they just do? So right now what I just did is left click the little data point and now I'm scrolling in. And what you want to do is take these tracking points and put them in the dead center of each of the markers. These are the digital markers that are on my face. You can literally create little markers on, and put it on your face. Maybe using pieces of tape or you can use mascara and, and draw it on your face or whatever. It's up to you. Makeup or whatever. And whatever the case may be, once you have these markers on your face and how you're tracking them, whatever, whichever way you're tracking them, it will help you to label and place these markers in a digital sense using the motion tracking data tool on Blender. And it's literally drag and drop. So there's no excuse why you won't want to learn this. It's really simple. So now what I'm doing is using the shift key and a left click mouse button to highlight the ones that I want to delete. So I'm going to each one with my mouse and, you, and left clicking them. And the ones that are not selected are going to stay. So I'm going to hit the delete key on my keyboard and click delete track and all those disappear because those are not markers. Those are just misplaced. Um, those are not activated markers or markers that I want to activate. Those are misplaced because they're not connected to anything that I need to track. So keep that in mind. Just want y'all folks to see that. Also over here, I'm deleting these and I don't want to track my hair. It's tied to my hair right here. So I'm going to delete that one. So that's that part. Here goes another one. Delete that. What I'm really concerned with tracking, I don't need my face. Um, actually, sorry, my mouth. I don't need my mouth tracked because I got the Papagayo data. I may choose to keep the jaw. So let me just select this one. Delete that. Delete this one and this one. And yeah so I, I'm most definitely gonna use the nose one because the nose one is gonna help my nose move and the eyes obviously gonna help my eyes move and if I want my eyebrows which are really important to have sometimes you want that to move as well so I'm clicking add and then I can left click where I want to left click it in the center boom click add and then left click and you can add those like that I'm zooming in using my scroll wheel my mouse scroll wheel add left click add left click and keep in mind all these are deactivated when I when I say deactivated they're not actually tracking anything yet they're just being laid down so when you lay down stuff you're not tracking it. You're just actually just trying to lay out the trackers 
so you have a good uh, lineup of tracks. So here we go. Add this one may have an issue because you see that white line will end up being in a way. That's the upper portion of the face rig tracker screen. I don't know what that is, but all right, add and then that one and add and then that one. So there we go. Now that tracks pretty much everything that I want to track. And now we got some on the bottom shift, select them and delete those. Boom. So all that I have that I want to track is one, two, three, four, five, six. What is it? Oh, I got another one right here. I got 10 on the top actually. So there we go. So I got 10 on the top and I got my eyes right here. And if I wanted to track every little portion, like to make my eyes blink and all that, I can track those as well. But for the most part, this is how you start out. This is the overview of the tracking data. The other part, once you're done, you want to hit the A key to select all. That's really important. And then you're going to scroll down towards the bottom here and hit this little arrow that says track that opens up the more of like the tracking activation area so when you hit play it will try to track all these markers that you have indicated that you want to be tracked it has to be highlighted in yellow if it's if it's dim if it's dim like this it won't track them you have to hit the a key to select all the ones that you want or you can left click individual ones if you just want to track two points so say I wanted to just track my eyes those are both highlighted this one's highlighted in white this one's highlighted in yellow now all I gotta do is hit the play here or I can click control T the control key on the keyboard and the T key and it will try to track them as far as the motion of this actual video is moving so if I hit the play, it will try to move based on all of these points that we indicated that we wanted to move, that we wanted to track. So it's not following it, obviously, because all I did was hit the play button on the timeline. So keep that in mind. So if I hit the play here, that's going to be like hitting control T. So watch. Now what it did is it jumped from zero to 17 in the, the frames. So in terms of frames, keyframes, stuff like that, it actually tracked just as much here and it didn't want to continue. Why? Probably because it lost track of where it's supposed to be at. So right now it didn't move down to the bottom because I blinked my eye and the blink was so fast that it got stuck up here so when it whenever it gets stuck you have to indicate where you want to move it at so you have to select the tracking data point that you want and move it in place so you can get it back to the center you want to do that immediately after it stops at whatever point in time that it stops on your timeline or graph you can see the graph there it's like a graph editor and this graph editor will indicate that you either have motion being tracked or not. So I have motion being tracked, as you can see here, this little up and down graph. So now what I'm going to do is do it again. So we hit the play again. As soon as I retract the data, you want to do it every single time. Retract the data. Get it in the center of where you want to locate it zoom in close and then hit it again now look how much it actually jumped it jumped from 17 or 20 to about 78 now it's up here see that but this point is actually being tracked so it stopped where this one lost track so we we'll grab this one and move it in and Start it again. See, it did it again, but this one was off. This one is pretty accurate. If it turns red, 
just move it around a little bit and center it again and then hit the play boom see now it jumped off track there and you're gonna have to play with this and just keep doing it until you get it right it might take some time but this is the basics to the motion tracking see now it jumped from 80 to around 128 so that means you tracked all that and that data should be tracked pretty good and it lost track right here this is kind of similar to Adobe After Effects with using keyframes and creating different keyframe animations and stuff like that. If you know anything about animations, this is the kind of thing that you have to do to um, build up some sort of animations that look realistic, you know, whatever type of animations you want to create or look really unique and creative. I'm not, like I said, that skilled at animation, so this is stuff that I'm learning using Blender instead of using Adobe After Effects because you have to pay for that and this one's free and so why not learn all the free stuff that I can and then get really skilled and then move to the paid stuff so here we go we're gonna hit play again it lost track on these two points it's probably because my eyes squinted and moved in inward and so now we're gonna move this down and bam we're gonna hit the play again and move this up Try to move a little faster and move this up, move this up and you can see the graph it keeps moving and you can fix these in between so if you have any slight errors you can keep going in between points so meaning you can slide this back in time and you'll see where you lose track. So you see certain points is gaining track and certain points is losing track. It's showing my eyes blink. See that? So wherever you lose track, you can regain it. Say, let's see, right there, almost lost track, but I did not. It was a big move. And right here, I lost track. So I can go back, correct this one and hit the play right there correct this one and you just keep doing it going back and forth through your timeline moving this back and forth back and forth all the way up throughout the whole entire graph and hitting this play where you want to fix the errors and make sure you back it up to figure out where you lost track the exact point right there so now we'll fix that and hit the play again and then fix this hit the play again so now go back and you'll see it's tracking it see that pretty cool so it took me some time to figure that part out but with the a lot of the YouTube videos people are doing similar stuff but they're not explaining every little detail so it kind of threw me off and it took me some time to puzzle it together myself so some people may not want to cover everything and assume that you're following it or assume that you know but i want people to see that this is the kind of thing that you have you're going to have to learn to do so once you do all that say i wanted it to to end at 150 keyframes right now we're at, this is where you're at this is where you want to start and this is where you want to end in terms of displaying what you want people to see when you hit the play button and for it to play across the timeline here goes all the keyframes that were created from the tracking markers and these keyframes are going to be used to control the 3d empty that I create off of these two markers these two markers are going to turn into 3d empties in the viewport once I click this thing that says reconstruction here and I go link empty to track it will create the three empties and the three empties are going to come right out of the actual camera it's going to be tied into the camera and that's pretty crazy but that's what it is that's how the motion tracking data works so you'll see that in a second so what I'm going to do I'm going to set the time over here where it says end instead of it ending at 250 in the frame I'm going to end it at 150 since over here is where I went up to and I don't want to go too far. Just want to show you all folks how it works before my computer crashes and freezes. Hopefully it doesn't freeze again. 
So what we're gonna do now is go to reconstruction. Make sure we check the time because I gotta feed my cats. Reconstruction, we're gonna go to link empty to track. And those tracking points should be good. So we're gonna link empty to track and you'll see that only one tracking point comes in because I have just this one selected. So I have to have this one selected as well. So we're gonna do shift and select that one. We're gonna do control Z actually, we'll back it out. And now have both of them highlighted and you'll see that the three empties are gonna come in. So there goes the viewport there. When I go to reconstruction, link empty to track, there we go. Now we got these two empties 3D empties that shows up. Here goes the camera. And you can see that it's coming from the center point of the camera. So now well, let me jump back to layout. Now that I got that data in there, and you'll see the 3D empties are in there with the the actual camera, which is here. Now this is the point where you want to think outside the box because with motion tracking data, if you don't have a depth sensor, like I said, a depth camera, you're not going to get full depth. You're just going to get a one dimension to two dimension, actually a one dimensional tracking. So that means that all these points are all going to be in one dimension. They're not going to have depth. It's not going to be out here or out here or wherever. And you're going to feel and, and notice that you're going to have issues when you're trying to line it up with the eyes. So say I wanted the eyes to be here the nose to be tracked here, the mouth to be tracked here. One dimension is one plane like this in a vertical, right? And across in a horizontal. So in 3D space, your face is not lined up in one dimension. Your face is lined up in multiple dimensions. It's a three dimensionality. So with three dimensionality, you have to have each data point to key in at each point that you want to reference. So with that in mind, you may have to adjust cameras, add multiple ca multiple cameras, and that's what I did. So I'm going to show you all folks, like I said in future videos, how accurate I can get it. I challenge anybody out there who's willing to learn this stuff to try to puzzle what I just talked about and try to figure that out. It takes some time. Um, let's see if I can navigate stuff a little bit with this I'm just gonna scale it in a little and rotate uh, I gotta get the gizmo to work there we go rotate it just moving the camera in a good spacing and positioning with respect to my character and zoom it out Actually, where the camera's at is not a great position. So I'm going to have to select my character and move my character back instead. Because where I chose to add the camera at, let me just add a camera here. We'll do it over again. As opposed to being here. We'll go to add, add camera, rotate. Uh, in the Z 90 degrees boom left click go to select move it up position it around the character's face boom something like that and what did I just do control Z sorry about that now we're gonna get rid of this camera with the 3d empties we're going to make this the active camera, so we're going to go to view, go to cameras, set active object as camera. Now that's the active camera. And go to motion tracking and then do it over again. Reconstruction, link empty to track, go back to layout. And now you see the camera in a better view. Hmm. Let's go to scale and try to scale them down. There we go. Now the eyes are somewhat closer. The scale down in the horizontal. And we have to get a little slight rotation. Like that. 
and let's move it in a great position. Boom. So now the eyes are very close to the character, the character's eyes positioning. And now we just rotate and basically line up the eyes like that. Get a good rotation on the blue axis. Just to try to line it up. And bam, very close to the accuracy of the character. Move it in. And we want to be as accurate as we can. Let me hit the N key to get rid of that menu. And move it down a little bit and to the left. Now we're going to scale it a little bit more. Use the red scale. Bring it in. Right there. Now zoom in. If you have problems zooming in and if it gets stuck, you go to view and frame selected and you can get closer. Hold on, view. We want to select the eyes. And then view frame selected. There we go. And that is pretty good. Now we want to get the dead center of the eyes. Because that's what we're going to be moving and tracking to. So let's use the 3D cursor. And use the move tool. Oops. Select the tracking points and move it a little bit forward or backward. And try to see where this is located. There we go. See if we need a rotation. We do. Rotate. Okay. That doesn't look too bad. Maybe a little bit back. Put a better rotation on it. Okay. Now I notice another thing that 3D empty right now is rotated. This one's rotated a little bit in the wrong position. How did that happen? I don't know. Whatever the case may be, that, that 3D empty has really bad rotation. Actually, what is that? I don't think that's the right empty. Something went wrong. Because here goes one empty here, here goes another one. How did it end up like that? I don't know. It's all good. Well, basically, you want that line up like that. And then you go to the eyes and you can track it. So you select the eyes. Um, actually, not the eyes. You have to track the face rig. So let's get off the eyes. Let's activate the bones. So alternate. H, alternate H, where's the bones at? Hmm, the bones are missing. It's pretty interesting. Um, select the body. Where's the bones? Alternate H. Hmm. What the freak happened to the bones? Uh, let's see. Image X2. Let's go to... I don't understand what happened to the bones. 
kind of weird what's going on now but we should have the bones showing when I use alternate H so that way I can do the rest of the connection so I can connect the 3d empties to the bones and I don't know what happened I got multiple tracks yeah that's probably what the problem is here let's get rid of that tracker delete that tracker okay so we got this tracker hold on let's see real quick just want to move this okay there we go we got too many tracking points I don't know why all those tracking points came up and it's not even positioned properly Okay, so that's that. Um, hold on. What's going on? Why is it? Hold on one second. 3D cursor. It's supposed to be set up to the 3D cursor. I didn't even change it. Okay, there we go. And move this in. And then scale it. Now the scale is not even working that well. Okay. That's good. All right. I'll just leave it like that. But still, we should be able to select the bones. And for some reason, I'm not getting the bones. Well, that's the bone right there. What's going on? Visibility. I don't know what's going on with the bones, man. Alternate H. Uh, bone, bone, visible. Let's go to bone visibility because that's probably what it is. Viewport. In front. Stick. Octahedral. Where the hell is the bones at? That is some weird crap. The bones just gone. I didn't delete the bones. Still shows that it's here, but it's not showing up. Look, I can go to pose mode, but I'm not getting no visible bones showing. I don't know what the hell's going on. There it is. Now it's showing up. That was very weird, but the bone should have showed up. The whole time I'm pressing alternate H and it's not showing up. Okay, here we go. So now that the bones are here, we can go into pose mode and click on the center bone for the eye and try to tie it into the tracker. So what you would do is go down here to add bone constraint and then the one that I found that works is, hold on, I think it's track two here in the tracking. So go to track two and you hit this little target object and then that should track to it and hit the play. Okay. So now we're gonna, hold on one second, go to object mode. We will go to visibility, deselect in front, hit the H, 
and hit the play. And that eyeball is all over the place. Um, that was one of the ways I did it. But I also figured out the fix to it. Right now it's not 